Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel Curiosity Box and in this video I have a football themed video and I'm going to review this new football magazine called Late Tackle. I got found this in an independent news agents so I don't know yet if the supermarkets are going to be stocking it but this is issue 1 September October 2011 and it's £2.99 a football magazine made by fans so this is the cover it says Mick Quinn the old school star on modern football inside Michael Owen no one's hero flawed genius of Robin Friday the brilliance of Brazil 1982 the numbers up for statistics Robbie Savage just what is the point of this big mouth show off so that's what the cover looks like so and you've got a contents page there inside this issue 4 to 5 Mick Quinn 6 to 7 Robin Friday 8 to 9 Mark Lowen 10 to 11 John Nicholson 12 to 13 Andy Hunter 14 to 17 Merv Payne 18 to 19 Rory Smith 20 to 21 Paul Gretsch 22 to 23 Colchester 24 to 25 Sunday League 26 to 30 Peter Reid 31 Anti Heroes 32 to 33 Football Art, 34 to 37 Life in Wigan, 38 to 39 Stats Life, 40 to 42 Brazil 1982, 43 to 45 Non League, 46 to 47 Robbie Savage, 48 to 49 Scottish Football, 50 to 57 Swiss Ramble, 58 to 59 Leeds United, 60 to 61 Classic Match, 62 to 63 Walsh's World. And then we have a letter from the editor. Welcome to Late Tackle. So, what is Late Tackle? Well, perhaps it's easier to explain what Late Tackle is by explaining what it isn't. It isn't a gender-driven journalism from writers trying to keep their contract contact sweet. It isn't another vehicle for the meaningless drivel that pours from the mouths of too many players and managers in the modern game. And it isn't a magazine which believes the Premier League is the be-all and end-all. We also don't believe that football began in 1992. Late Tackle is written by football fans with a genuine love for the game and the instructions were simple. If you're passionate and knowledgeable about a subject, write about it. And if we like it, we'll use it. The mag features journalists, bloggers, website owners and just plain old fans who had something to say about football. We hope you like it. And if you'd like to contribute to the next issue, get in touch with your ideas and the, web, and the email is latetackle at gmail.com so I'll just show you all the articles the mighty Quinn Mick Quinn was an old school footballer he had a drink, a bet and chased women a character anyone who's grown up in a working class area can recognise and a type of footballer largely unrecognisable from the men playing the game today so what does Quinn make of the modern game? Gareth Roberts asked him. Friday I'm in love. He scored a goal, even the referee applauded and inspired the super furry animal single The Man Don't Give a... I'm not seeing it. Paolo Hewitt tells us more about Robin Friday. Who loves Owen? When Michael Owen scored that goal against Argentina in 1998, he had the world at his feet. Now Peter Simpson says the striker is nobody's favourite player. John Nicholson, bring back the tackle. Same as it ever was. Crisis time at Everton, or the same as it ever was in recent times. The Guardian's Merseyside football correspondent Andy Hunter on unrest at Goodison Park. Like father, like son. A football team doesn't have to be successful to forge an unbreakable family bond, something Millwall fan Merv Payne knows all too well. So that's that article. Crisis? What crisis? Rory Smith of the Daily and Sunday Telegraph on how Italian football is going on the attack.
Conti makes it to his promised land. Paul Gretsch takes a look at the new Juve Juventus boss and what he must do to avoid the trap. No signings to speak of, but at least the car park's been tarmacked. Richard Williams won't be welcoming any new players to the community stadium as another season marooned in the middle of League One beckons. Where's the talking? What better way to escape clique-ridden top-level football than the spot of Sunday League? Surely the grassroots game can't have been eaten up by hackneyed phrases and overused expressions, can it? Adam Hurry of Angle of Post and Bar dot dot com investigates. Read it and weep. It must be great to know the manager of your team, right? Martin McFadden of Sunderland Fanzine A Love Supreme tells a cautionary tale. Not so Super Mario. Sorry if I mispronounced this name. Sahil Sidat wonders whether we are too quick to condemn modern day footballers, seeing them as overpaid, spoiled brats rather than anti heroes. And this really nice page is footy art. It loads of all footy art by Dan Layden from Sligo Island. His Twitter is at Blasted French. His website hotfootynews.blogspot.com and his email is blastedfrench at gmail.com and that's all his art that is produced. Well not all of it, that's a bit of his art that he's produced and it's really cool. I really like it. I like the Suarez picture and the poster's awesome. I really like that style of art. Welcome to the Six Team Town. Martin Tarbuck, editor of Wigan Athletic Fanzine, The Mud Hutter, on the frustrations of growing up in a place where some locals go out of their way not to support the local team. The numbers up. Football's big money, and so are st statistics. Matthew Breverton asks where the obsession came from and how do we get rid of it? Teenage Kicks, The Magic of Brazil 82 Neil Scott gets all nostalgic about the most loved underachievers of all time. Cutting it fine, groundsman, fundraiser, driver, cleaner there's more to life to manage, managing a grassroots football team than meets the eye, as Aidan Townsend finds out. Rants by Gareth Roberts, Savaging Robbie Power of Scotland To many Scottish, fo to many, Scottish football has become a joke. A two-horse race to be sneered at. A parochial competition long past its sell-by date. But not to Kenny Miller. The Ultimate Traders. Kevin O'Connor of SwissRamble.blogspot.com takes a detailed look at the amazing success delivered by FC Porto with finances that many championship teams can top. So that's quite a big article. Lots of pieces of that. Very interesting. Martin knows the score. James Willoughby on an FA Cup giant killing at Old Trafford that meant a lot to Leeds United fans, some more than others. Footballing Nirvana. Joe McCarthy remembers an incredible night at Anfield where the team that had swept all before them in English football for 20 years hit their peak. 
Walsh's World, Christian Walsh and Football Around the Globe. And then I've got the back page. Issue 2 of Late Tackle and All Good News Agents on October 26th. So I'm really pleased to found this because it's actually a very interesting read and I really enjoy reading this. So this is a brand new football magazine. I thought I'd show, show you all so you could look out for this in the news agents because I would recommend it. It's a really very interesting read. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.